have Benedek back. Yes, I am back. Wow, we missed you. Thank you. Especially me. I, I, I missed the meetings. The I had to push the record button every time. Ooh. Because I have them, I need to send them to you. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. If, if you have it uploaded, just send me the link via Skype and I'll upload them. Okay, who's here? Um, oh, who's not late? Um, okay, okay, okay. Antoine must be watching the soccer game, so we'll excuse him. Uh, and Benedek is sitting in a rally car, a very slow one with curtains. What do you mean? Oh, because he's sitting. Have you seen his chair? Yeah. It's rich. Um, what do I need to share and to close? This I close, this I close. <clears throat> and I will share my screen. Desktop. Okay. So. I have an agenda. Woo. I've been preparing it for 10 months, almost. <laughs> so, 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 uh, status as usual, documentation updates, we'll look at it. Um, community updates, what's new? Um, new features in source code from last week. Um, we'll talk about it, anti forgery authorization filter attribute. What is this? Uh, layouts which have been merged in one attacks. Uh, <clears throat> and stuff to talk about, uh, future of data access, background tasks, tasks, um, changes, and Abhishek to add some external links by himself. We have some demos too, so Sipke Oh yes, we have Zoltan as a demo. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I've seen it already. Uh, so we can skip. Anyone else as a demo? What did I write? Oh yeah, it's there. Um, okay, cool. So status first. Because lots of things happened last week. Um, three months ago, uh, this we saw um, patch tag pagination. So this is a pull request which was pulled into the code. Uh, Sipke working very hard on um, layouts. Um, Bertrand working and being blocked on deployment. Uh, Stanley will push some changes for the um, output cache, new features, which are being able to define explicitly on which um, query string you want to not vary by your um, um, cache. For instance, let's say you have a marketing um, Query string. You don't want you don't want any marketing query string to to change the cached value. Um, so he, fi he fixed that and some other stuff. Um, Piotr has worked, and <clears throat> we might want to talk about it. Um, for those who are uh, regularly at the triage meeting every Thursdays, uh, we've talked about a PR which was about changing the default interface for the Orchard caching module the business cache to make them generic and actually Piotr had the same issue so I gave him a go to work on a branch to see what it will mean because he was implementing it for the Redis cache and there are some limitations with the current interface uh, so it's a breaking change but we'll see what the impact is um, so he's working on it in the message bus branch and he's also uh, improving the Redis uh, implementation by using Lua script on the server side. My link had some issues.
I can still see your screen. So it should be okay. Okay, something happened. What did you miss? Hello? Nothing. It's okay. No, I can't hear you. Uh, okay, we'll restart link. back can you hear me i can hear you sebastian oh i can hear I okay can hear. so what wh where did i stop like i will reshare my screen okay i have lost my taskbar So what, what what did I say the last time you could hear me? We can Actually, hear me. I I, I, was, I could hear you all the time. So okay, so I was saying that Piot was working on the iCache service interface to make it generic, because otherwise it's limiting the the different implementations, and so it will be a breaking change. We'll have to estimate what is broken. I'm not, not sure that much. Um, <clears throat> uh, then Stanley fixed some cache items in validation by tag. Um, this one I talked about. I talked about. So you see a bunch of work items which have been fixed, by the way, by Stanley. And they are on one ATEX. Uh, so better working on deployment, uh, Stanley on output cache, uh, very output cache by cookies, uh, SIPC dynamic forms, and this is the work from Piotr on the Redis improvements. So just for the people who don't know, Redis has Lua scripting on the server side. And if you look at it here, not this one here. You see, you can run scripts like this. You can send scripts to be run on the server side. If you want, for instance, to remove all the keys with a specific pattern, you don't have to call Redis with all the keys. You just send a script which will be run on the server side, like a stop procedure. It makes it much faster. Um, <clears throat> um, this is Piotr. Uh, Piot fixing Sipka's code. We'll talk about it. Um, Piot working also on another branch, background tasks, which will register a background task in the um, what is called I registered object, something like this. So you can be you can be triggered, your code can be triggered when IS is shutting down so that we can shut down background tasks explicitly. And it will wait for you to, to shut down before shutting down uh, IS. Uh, so it's a different branch. Then um, merge, dynamic forms, deployment, lots of work on dynamic forms. Sipke will do a demo. Um, Lombic fixing a read well, adding a return URL to the login, return URL um, support. Uh, please check this is the extension method we've made and not the internal redirect local, because our extension method checks more things than just the default one. Um, this is from Lombic implementing, um, fixing some bugs by implementing the new in ASP.NET internal, well, .NET internal uh, caching provider, memory cache class. Um, this one, mm -hmm. um, I was a bit concerned by uh, whether, whether uh, it would clash with other tenants. 
Um, so I didn't see any tenant specific stuff in here. Well, I I saw some tenant specific code, so because yeah, the, the, there is a prefixing logic already in the, um, in a layer up. Okay. So that's why I didn't add anything. That's in uh, in yep. the cache service implementation. So the default cache storage provider just has to put a key and remove a key, and the service which actually calls that handles multi-tenancy. I assume the goal was to have um, storage provider implementations not care about that. Because if you scroll up to the top, you're using that memory de memory dot default, and I thought yeah, but, that that was shared. Yeah, but look at the key. Maybe the key contains a tenant. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, that's fair point. And that's what uh, okay. Sultan says. Yeah, that's, that's a good And if it's bad, we can change that. I don't know. Because no, no, no. I mean, if that's if that's yeah. the case, and that's fine. It's just I, I wasn't too sure that. But was again, all. that might be bad because maybe storage providers could handle tenant multi tenancy better than what we can do. Uh, so. Actually, I was thinking about that. Uh, Same. So I, I would favor that. So and it's fine. It's not breaking, because from a service perspective, we still call the same key. It's just internally. Do we put the key inside the implementation or not? And if we are breaking it by actually, you will see Zoltan with spot changes. If we are breaking interface, we'll still. And new unit, test, unit tests. So, as you might, well, if you haven't read the, uh, Bertrand's blog post, um, and he will paste the URL in the chat. If you haven't read his uh, blog post, the issue was that as many providers, many modules can provide the, an identity portion of the full identity, there could be some, well, the, the, the code was actually checking that the full identity was matching both, well, both or any identity provider will match um, the available uh, identities in an identity. And this could be an issue in some import export scenarios. And you will not find, you will find, you will, well, the import export will think that this content item that you try import doesn't exist in the system because all the identities don't match. Or you just have one identity and there are two identity providers available in the system. So now is uh, matching each identity. If there is one match, it means you we've got a content item. So there won't be any duplicate items anymore. Um, so many new branches and so yep, so many to actually merge once they have their approval. Um, <clears throat> so he fixed it and maybe I missed actually his change on the authorization, well, anti-forgery token. Yes, this one. Um, <clears throat> so another thing it changed, and I'm sure he has a blog post too, um, is that so you know that in a module manifest, you can opt in for uh, anti-forgery uh, checks for every request. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Boom. How do I say that? OK. Boom. So you know you can um, opt in for anti-forgery and every request, and there was no way to opt out for specific um, actions. So I made an attribute which is checked in the filter. You see, document live documentation, um, output cache. So we've seen that. <coughs> um, <coughs> This is done. And Tabify import export, fine. Um, two branches for the same thing. <coughs> so there's a branch, sorry. <coughs> there's a branch here for a new tag cloud functionality. Not sure we want that. We will have to discuss that. So the idea I assume being that um, you can filter, you can create a tag cloud by filtering on the username of the um, content owner. That seems very specific, so we need to talk about it before merging it. If you have any comment on this branch, you can chat about it. Um, so this is uh, fixed by Sipke 
with handling the fact that when you hit enter, for instance, I think in the username, um, in the users page, it will trigger the correct filter and not the bulk action. Yes. Um, this is removing unnecessary, but oh, we fixed that in one dot a dot x actually result ah, fixed it. Yeah, I didn't remember. Yeah, I didn't it, last week he fixed it, so we need to merge. Okay. Um, and then this guy is still alive. Well, maybe he created. A, did you assign it to him directly, or maybe it's because you imported his patch that his name appeared? Yeah, he created okay. the issue. He created the work. He had attached the patch, and I incorporated that patch. Cool. So yeah, we talked about it that we agreed about this feature. So now there is a checkbox in the output cache to allow cached uh, user base request to be cached. Um, so it won't very well. Yeah. And Bertrand, no, it won't uh, make the cache. Um, bigger because it's supposed to be the same cached entry whatever the user is yes it's not paired by user so yeah. this also means that if you use the default theme and you enable this feature it won't um, work it's bad so there yeah, is exactly. leaks you should be careful that all the pages render the same thing whatever the user is otherwise yes. there will be leaks so it's a security issue we should have a big warning under i will review the the warning with uh, with you um because okay. we need to be sure that to mention and maybe in red, don't do that unless you know what you're doing. True. Yeah. And maybe yes. maybe you need special permissions to. to, Man, to... I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Why not? Maybe yeah. you should need to be site owner because it's very critical. Exactly. Um, yeah. And maybe you should also come with a an, an easy easy way to ajaxify shapes and widgets. But no, no, there are, there are modules in the gallery for that. True. Okay. There's one. There's one risk with this patch, and that is, um, if you're using the editor, the widget wrappers that display the edit buttons on the front end, um, potentially those could get also. Cached. Yeah, this this one and anything that checks the that works only when you're authenticated. Same yeah. thing for shape tracing. Let's say I enable shape tracing, I'm authenticated, and it will be right. cached. Stupid, but yeah. So um, I did create another ticket for that, but I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, that one I think you closed. Um, that yeah, one basically we, we, said, yeah, don't don't cache it if the widget wrappers the, are enabled. Yeah, we closed that ticket because um, because that that ticket would only solve that those two scenarios, but not the scenario, for example, the shape tracer, and there might be other scenarios where which wouldn't be covered. So, so that's why we say if you use that feature, <clears throat> you need to know what you're doing and work around it yourself manually by ajaxifying widgets, for example, or shapes. Um, but that's up to the implementer. Um, then uh, this new branch about a rollback method on the content manager. Uh, there's a bug open for that. I'm not sure. I will write it down just to to know that. Yeah, we I, talk I, will, about I, have it. Link. I have a link. But here. I, I, we don't. We might not need to talk about it uh, right now. Um, so to be discussed, we need. Um, Roll back command, and we also need to think about the tag username. Just remember um, this. And this morning, I fixed a unit test because, based with the, an update on the output cache, one of the spec flow tests were broken. And this was an issue with the spec flow test, actually. So, not the output cache uh, issue. And as a reminder, mct.codebeta.com, you can uh, um, connect as a guest and you will see the CI for uh, Orchard if you want uh, just DLLs or source code, MS deploy builds uh, for specific branches. Okay, teamct.codebeta.com. Uh, cool. So, status done. Documentation updates. Oh, 
so late test one was from Adrian, which is who is really back. He's even pulling pull request. Add language to some plug blog syntax in lighting. Okay, thank you. I don't know who you are, but thank you. Aaron Holmes. Um, and I'm sure that's it. Okay. That we had I had to back that back those out because the syntax highlighting for our uh, rendering engine for Markdown That's couldn't right. handle it. I think, I think we got um, to the root of the problem. And sample fixed. Oh no, this is the same thing. Okay, cool. Um, yes, I think it's not C sharp. It's C sharp in letters or something like this. There is a I know what this is. So read me. Let's see. Or for what the school ID works better. I have Sabrina as the first name. Um, C sharp. You see, this is how it's done. C sharp. Seven zero four four is the. ID. Yeah. That might explain. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, community updates. Yeah, that's something maybe we, we can do regularly. Um, just to talk about the different tweets and blog posts that have been uh, done during the last week. Um, so I have this column, which is all related to Orchard. Uh, something to mention is that, um, yes, Abhishek will do a workshop in Mumbai. Uh, far away from Hungary. Um, what else is it's worth mentioning? <laughs> Not really. Uh, oh yeah, this thing was interesting. <laughs> Did you see that? So short shirt. Apparently, I can't remember the name of uh, the guy who did that. He's working back on this website and he's doing some new layouts. Interesting. The site is still up. I'm hosting it, so interesting. And he updated it because the short shot website has the new banner. You will see at the top. You see, we are working on a new short shot, November 2014. Interesting. Um, people are asking for 1.9 um, in the next few weeks. Um, what else? Long big talking about the demo they will do. Orchard market was down and is up back. Bertrand posting. Some people migrating from Orchard to WordPress. Um, that happens. This guy who has a WordPress um, website and used to blog about Orchard three years ago and recently installed uh, an automatic tweet plugin in WordPress which tweets, retweets his old blog post from three years ago, so they usually don't make sense in uh, the current context, and that's about it. Nothing very interesting in this case. And on the blog post side, all the blog posts from um, Bertrand, is blocking uh, like 10 blog posts already this month. Um, and, and, and we need to update this page because just with a blog post from uh, Bertrand. Is that page not uh, updated yes, automatically? No. Oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah, sorry, I didn't have time to do that um, in the last few weeks. So I will get back yes, to sometimes I get some requests from mail and then I, I do that. Uh, if I, if I haven't seen the blog post. Uh, any, anyone with uh, um, access to this website can do that. And um, yeah. but that's what's uh, new in the community. Uh, I haven't checked actually the new modules in the gallery recently. Someone is sleeping.
Uh, Orchard O data. Yes. So um, I need to answer his email. He's fixed the V1 and seems to work. So he pushed a new version. Um, I don't know what it is. In factory. Interesting. No. I have no idea what it is. Oh, you so, know what? I think you know what I th it's doing is you pass in like um, blog post and it will get you the blog post repository. Yeah, dynamically. Rather than inject it, it's using a service locator, that kind of thing. Okay. Google Analytics modules and update. There are multiple ones. XML RPC <clears throat> workflow activity. Okay. Remote procedure call by workflow. Okay. Uh, image slider, image slider, sorry. And, 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 well, that will be it. Newest, just to see. Um, version manager, yes. So JRS uh, committed that. I posted something on the forum because the audit tray module should do most of what version manager is doing already. Uh, validation engine, interesting. Philip, is Philip here? Yes, what is it? Validation engine. If you want to describe it quickly, okay. From fields. Okay, client side validation. Maps bootstrap from shown. Okay, we'll see more next week. Um, demos, let's do the demos. Uh, read the, uh, Zoltan's demo are long. So Zoltan, you have 10 minutes max. That's, uh, that's more than anticipated. Okay, we'll see. So 10 minutes, I top everything. <laughs> Go. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, let me, let me know when you can see my screen. Uh, in the meantime, I will be sharing some links. And the links, not in the link U way and not in the link C way, but in the link K way. Uh, so can you see my screen? No, nope, you have to share it. What? I already did that and it started loading. But this I was is interesting. I was still presenting and I clicked the stop presenting. Okay. okay that's, that's funny. All right. So now I should be able to present indeed. All right. So what's this about? Uh, and somebody, uh, somebody shout if you can see it. Uh, this is tidy orchard development. And why is it tidy and what is orchard development? So how we develop orchard today is that uh, you take the full orchard source, whatever way uh, that might be, and you develop all your codes basically inside the orchard source. So your code is is um, inside everything that comes with Orchard. It's um, it's kind of mixed, and you can't separate your own code from Orchard code. Uh, can you see see my screen now? Yeah. Cool. I can. So what I wanted to do is uh, some way that lets you uh, lets you keep your own code, or uh, let it be extensions like modules or themes and config files completely separated from the built-in code of Orchard. So you can separately manage it, separately keep it under source control, and uh, and um, just view it separately like it should be. And this is the result. Uh, here we can see a tidy Orchard development solution, uh, but is, uh, by the way, available on the uh, tidy Orchard development quick start repository that I link to in the chat window. Uh, here we have a, a solution that is basically um, that looks like an Orchard solution. So here it is opened up. But we don't have anything else that that comes with Orchard. So as you can see, we are in the roots of this um, for, uh, root folder of this solution. 
so we didn't have to go to add to the to the source folder to to get to the solution file, but it's in the root itself, and there is nothing else, just an orchard.web. It's called orchard.web, but I could call it arbitrarily. The point is that this is this is the web project itself, and in the web project can we find orchard. The actually everything else here is my own code. Uh, there is a single subfolder called Orchard that contains the full Orchard source. Uh, it's really the full Orchard source, as you can see. It's unmodified, by the way, apart from one thing, it's missing the web config. Uh, unfortunately, this is a limitation I couldn't work around. Uh, and apart from this uh, Orchard subfolder, we have everything that, uh, that, uh, that corresponds, uh, corresponds to just, to just our, our solution. solution. So, so we, we have our, our modules folder, but well, there is a sample folder here, a sample module here, but of course your would come here. Uh, we could also have a themes folder. Uh, here's the app data, of course, and here are all the config files, including, oops, including the whole uh, config folder copied over. And this is what we can uh, can add it. So all in all, uh, we have an Orchard solution, as you can hear, that looks and feels like an Orchard solution. Your own stuff is not inside Orchard, it's rather it's separated, and Orchard comes from a subfolder. Um, this allows a um, uh, lot of scenarios. Uh, particularly, you could keep uh, these this modules folder um, these modules and themes folders under, are under source control separately, um, even in different source control repositories. Um, so this is um, this is problematic with uh, the standard way of Orchard development. And furthermore, since Orchard is a repository here uh, or, or a subfolder here, you can keep it in a separate repository. But you could even pull it in from the the main Orchard repository, of course. This means that that um, updating and upgrading Orchard is um, as trivial as as uh, overwriting everything here. But in case of uh, using the, the main repository, is just a, a checkout. Uh, also, you could have, and by the way, I'm, I'm not demonstrating that it works, because it works, by the way. Um, the implementation is not uh, something clean, and not something that's uh, remotely production ready but it works. Uh, so for example, you could have this Orchard folder uh, in a central place uh, of your computer, and you could, you, could use the, uh, you could use a single Orchard folder, a single Orchard uh, source uh, from all of your Orchard solutions. And um, this is possi possible if you use uh, the same Orchard version among multiple solutions, but could spare you some, some storage and build time. Uh, about the implementation, there is uh, there is a single class library that drives all this. Uh, it's called Tidy Orchard Development Toolkit. Uh, mostly, it's it's all about uh, virtual pass uh, proxying, because um, in the end, uh, this whole thing uh, needs to tell Orchard that you are a, you are a normal Orchard solution with a single modules folder with a single themes folder, uh, everything in place. And to tell Orchard this this lie, it has to fake some passes, or or rather it has to reroute some passes. So if some pass would go to the uh, to the to the core project the core modules, for example, it will reroute it to to this Orchard subfolder. So this is kind of a workaround, but there was no feasible way, as far as I could tell, otherwise because the the passes slash themes and slash modules and slash core are hard-coded in, um, in a lot of places inside Orchard and just simply put in a different modules folder. Um, yeah, so this is the core, and there is also an HTTP module that, uh, that deals with the static requests, because all the static requests still go to the, to the same passes, because this is uh, also not something uh, simple to change. But these are rerouted in the background by background by an HTTP module. Uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I've already shown this to Sebastian, and we started a discussion about um, what we could do to to separate the Orchard source from everything else in in a day-to-day -day development, apart from such workarounds. 
And uh, and also it's an interesting question what other uh, other CMSs or other open source projects do. And let me uh, let me copy something else into the chat window. I just very quickly have gone over uh, three CMSs: uh, .NET Nuke and uh, and Umbraco and uh, and Drupal. Uh, how they do it. And I don't think anybody has it figured it out in the perfect way. So uh, here are a few notes. Feel free to look around, and feel free to uh, give your give your opinion about how to do your development. So what do you think, guys? Thanks for the attention. So I suppose everybody uh, just stepped uh, in. Agrees, maybe. <laughs> no, is this meant to be debated now? Uh, no, well, you have, no, I mean debated. The, well, don't think there will be any debate. I don't think we can. We won't. We won't take this code as is because that will change the full Orchard story, and uh, with also caveats. So no, it's. An interesting concept. It's open source. Anyone can use that. It will solve, I'm sure, the repository issue for some companies. That's for sure. Not all companies have the issue. If you have a team, you might have this issue. So you might be interested in, interested in that. Um, Vantage who says we should see what he did with Nitrate. And maybe he will show us next week what he did with Nitrate. Um, so there is no debate here. Unless someone wants to include that in the core, I don't think we can take it in the core. But well, uh, this is, of course, not intended to, uh, for this. And, this, and is, this is a concept and an experiment. And what we talked with uh, Zoltan is, what should we change in Orchard to make it easier or to fix the issue directly in Orchard? So maybe what he showed is a solution. And that's why we talked about other CMSs. And they don't have any solution, the other CMSs. So I'm not sure there is a solution for that. At even PHP or SP.NET, that doesn't solve, that doesn't make the, yeah, that's, so it's a kind of a trick or an organization more than something we can ship as a source code directly. Uh, so at least you should do a blog post about what you showed and how to organize that because you have two links, the Bitbucket and the package. I don't know what you shared, but there is no explanation written explanation on how to do that. And if you have a blog post, we might even link to it uh, from the documentation for development, like a separate paragraph explaining for team development how to handle the repositories. Because people ask that, how should I organize my repositories? Should I branch, fork, uh, uh, have clone it? And how do I work as a team and things like that? So this is one solution, one answer. Um, yeah, I, I will. I will write a blog post about that. Uh, by the way, there is a readme in, um, in the toolkit repository that, that um, explains an overview what you should do and what this is for. So Kelly is mentioning: Should we think about it for 2.x? Uh, certainly, if we can make it easier for team development in 2.x, because 2.x will be breaking. Let's uh, let's think about that and see what we can change. For sure, that's one point to improve. Anything can be improved into the text. That's why we bump uh, the major version. Um, so definitely something to consider. <laughs> so just for Bertrand, maybe you can watch it. It's recorded. The issue is, so Zoltan made uh, a folder organization and some code where you can put Orchard source code inside as a deep folder which is linked to the Orchard repository, to the main one. So you don't have to change Orchard. Orchard is part of your solution, and you put your modules into your own folder of your own solution. And Orchard is some part of that. So you can f pull every time you want, and your main repository will know which change set of Orchard it uses. So Orchard is a sub-repository of your main repository. And the goal is to make uh, team development easier. Um, okay, so thank you, Zoltan, and uh, we can continue discussion. Uh, Sipke, demo. 
Yeah, um, my screen. Um, Don't tell about... us you're not ready. I'm ready. <laughs> cool. Are you ready? Are you I can ready? see your screen. Okay. Oh, that was fast. So I did a little something yesterday. Um, and what it enables you to do is roll back content. So for example, we create a new page and we'll call it page one with one line. We'll add a, uh, uh, a change comment. This is a comment about this change we're making. This field is from the audit trail? Yes, this is the audit trail field. Uh, a field coming from the audit trail part attached to the page type. And I'm going to add another line. I'll call it line two. So this is a change. And I'll publish. Uh, since we have uh, a history now, we, we also see an inline audit trail of uh, the initial creation and the publication of that content item. We'll publish this change, and we'll. This, so this is this is these are this is an audit trail feature. But what we can do, uh, if we go to the view audit trail, we'll see an audit trail of our content item. And what we can do now is we can roll back to previous versions. So. Uh, this version one has just a single line, and version two, that's our current version, which has two lines. <clears throat> but now, of course, if you want to roll back, you can click on this button, roll back. It will ask you, are you sure? And then it will create a new version. So version two has been rolled back to version one, but it created as version three. So it will not uh, delete history. It will actually create a new version based on your target um, version. And now if you look at the page, it will have our line one. And this is nice because you can also roll back the rollback. So if you wanted your second line again, you'll just roll back to version two. And we have our version back. So that's the demo in a nutshell. For this, I had to, um, th this the, the reason I started this is because of this issue here in Coplex, where someone tried to roll back to a older version, um, but there was this issue, uh, not an issue with the API, it's just the, the content manager enables you to create a content item instead of version, and you would expect it maybe to uh, create a new version record, but actually it updates an existing version I, uh, content item record. And I, I started out fixing that, but then the implementation became a little bit messy because there's now it's not just creating content, it's also creating new version records, and then you, I would have to suppress certain events from being triggered. So instead of going down that route, I, I um, added a new function, a new method on the content manager called rollback. So it's, that way it's a little bit cleaner and more to the point because that's actually what you want to do. You don't want to just change a version number, which you could do using the version options object. You can specify a version number. Uh, I added a new static property on the version options. Um, so you can specify, I want to create a rollback version of a content item. And there you can specify the, the desired version number. Uh, as well as an option to publish it or no. Um, but it's, it's been pushed to a feature branch called Rollback for Sebastian to review. Can, does it create a draft version of that? Yes, it, it, it depends on how you invoke the API. It looks okay. like it's, it's really simple. Um, and the UI creates a draft? Um, the UI currently publishes always. So you, So your latest version is... You can only roll back once you have a published version, so you can only roll back to that published version. So I'm assuming you want it published, but that's something you might not want to do. So I'm just I'm curious if you have any suggestion. Well, if, if it's draftable, I think it should be draft. Okay, so automatically it will be saved as a draft and not published automatically. So that means you always you will have to do two clicks. So it's one not really roll back; it's back. it's restore. It's more of a yeah, restore. I, I also had this issue with the terminology. <laughs> restore is yeah, restore I prefer restore. restore. Yeah, because you're not actually rolling back these things. No. You're adding a new. Yep. So and things. you don't have to be that explicit in the version number of your message because it will it will 
it, I mean, this one is fine. To rest, we show to restore version three. Yes, and then the notification should just say, "Oh, version three has been restored." Thank you. Okay, not okay. page one has been rolled back from version four to version three as version. Wow. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, that can be simplified. And, and restore, and then if it's draftable, make it a draft. If it's not draftable, make it published. That makes sense. So I'll change that um, and, and push that code. And if you're happy with it, we and can. We have, and we need, the, in. we need the edit permission for that. Yes, it is. It is checking a permission. Um, it, it is checking that permission. If it's restore and creates a draft, it should be edit permission. Yes. Okay. Um, cool. Very cool. Um, so, 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 demo, let me write it down. It was for the restore um, action. And, um, okay. Draft if draftable. Okay, we have 12 more minutes. There are some subjects I would like to talk with you which might drive some votes and things. Um, so first, uh, something new, kind of new feature I want to talk with you because a customer came to me with a requirement. Um, it's about background tasks um, and issues that have already been mentioned and I have a, a solution for that that we propose. So the issue with background task is that we have one background service which will run a set of tasks synchronously every minutes or every every 10 minutes as you want. Uh, the issue with this thing is that Yes, thank you, Sipke. The issue with this is that um, if you have a task which is very long to run, all the other ones will wait for this to run. For instance, the indexing one could take, um, let's say, five hours, and your other task will just wait for that. It's not reentrant, so if a task is more than the delay of the next execution, the next execution won't, won't start. It will wait for the previous one to, to run. Uh, but you see the issue with that you might delay too much some other tasks that you would like to run every minute, whatever happens for other tasks. Okay, make sense? So the solution I have in mind is that we could create the notion of background tasks groups. And um, these groups could be defined um, by an attribute or by code, so that when you create a task, you define which group it is. So it could be the default group, or it will be your own group or specific feature group. This way, you will be able to define a timer for each of the groups. So the default group will have the default timer, like one minute, like we have today. And we could say that the indexing will run on its own group, so it won't affect the other ones. So if you have two groups, the two groups will run in their own timer and each group will be synchronous synchronous with its own tasks. So if in group A, I have two tasks, uh, A1, A2, and group B, I have one task, uh, B1, and group A runs every minute. So every minute, A1 will be called, and when it's done, A2 will be called. And then the next minute, A1 and A2. And at the same time, the group B can have its own timer like every, every hour, and every hour, group B will be run synchronously, okay, like it's done today. So this way we can define for each of the tasks if it matters that they, they have to run um, in their own synchronous thread, okay, independent from the other one. And also we could define the timers associated, associated to that by configuration like we do today. Um, feedback. Okay, Zoltan has already, I'm sure, a pull request with that, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah, that's, that's just the work item. That's a different work item um, with actually the same purpose, but I, I like your suggestion more because um, I thought about uh, executing background tasks in parallel. So that would mitigate this, the same issue yep. where one yep. background task blocks the others. Parallel has some other issues. Um, it's more complicated it's, for sure. Yes, and we can still 
have the same behavior by creating other groups. And this way, the code will define the parallelizability of the task. You see? So, yes, I, I th yeah, but yeah. So we yeah, said so, so uh, I was thinking about uh, the same. So having um, uh, the groups, uh, so the, the, but not the groups, but more like uh, Zoltan said. So each task can be uh, so to prevent the reentry. So uh, we could run uh, all it's, the tasks after already, every minute. It's already non-reentrant. You don't have to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not a reentrant, yes, but uh, but it suppresses all other tasks uh, waiting. But uh, what I was thinking is to run every, uh, all the tasks in parallel every minute uh, and um, create a continuation task. For for example, you have an uh, indexing task uh, which is long running and some other task which is short running. So uh, both will be run in parallel, but the continuation for each of those tasks will run only after the previous one finishes. So they will run in parallel. But uh, they won't, uh, so if there is a long running task, it won't stop or slow down the short running task, which is happening in the background. Uh, so it's, it's a same similar, thing. Yeah, same, thing, same thing, yeah, yeah. But, yeah but not, but you were more explicit about those groups. So it's a good thing, I guess, to, to be able to change the, uh, the timing. Okay, uh, because cool. Yes, and, uh, I and can take it because I'm currently working on the background tasks uh, anyway. So um, as as long as I can understand the code, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> will I'm sure. Um, yeah, you can go on with the current branch you have. Um, and 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 for instance, the jobs queue, which is implemented as a background task, will have its own uh, group. That makes sense. Jobs queue. I can run so many things. So yeah, that that makes totally sense. Um, so maybe the groups should be the name of the. No, 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 no. The group is like an attribute on the task. You say background task group and a string. So it, it's not. Okay. And and there there is one called default. And if you don't provide an attribute, it will be a default group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes this sense, way we yeah. can make group inter modules if we want, or based on specific things that we don't know yet. Um, um, by tenant, uh, yes, because to whatever background services I run by tenant today. So there will be groups pertinent per groups. Um, yeah, so it's just a background service which has to get a collection of, of a collection of timers and when they resolve the tasks, they just group them by group. It's very easy as an implementation level. Uh, very, very easy. So if you have like more than five lines of code, Piotr, fail. Um, <laughs> and where would you define these groups? Uh, I mean, the you don't define them. Timing. It's convention and the or convention and the timing in the configuration like we do uh, today. Uh, like in the host components. Yes. Uh, wouldn't that be too much for the host components no. and, and probably something out of scope? No, I don't think so. Add, add, add a, um, um, you scare me. Maybe some. No. Uh, I don't know. Maybe property on the. On the background task, which means uh, a group no. of property. No. Or... no, no, because you have two tasks, they have the same group, they define two timers, what do you do? Boom. So it has to be the common configuration, host component, this is why it is today. It's fine. It's maybe not perfect, but it's very easy. Central location. You maybe don't, by using attributes. And, and you, you d no, what I said, you can't choose an attribute because you don't want to, it's configuration. You don't, you want to be able to configure it without changing your code. So why would you have an attribute? And as I said, if you have two tasks on the same group with two attributes, who wins? It has to be central. The first one, you know, the, 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 first, the, the, one. the, the first one, the, the, the attribute is... Uh, I don't even want uh, to talk about found. it. That's wrong. Okay. So it's host component. It's, it can be a file, any file. It can be any configuration, but it's not code. It can't work. It has to be my group foo is one minute done. And we have a solution today. It works. So why fix it? Why break it? Sultan, yeah, but what do you so, think? So, so the binding between the group and the, uh, and the actual uh, background task uh, is on the configuration level too, right? So no, um, each task will have an attribute with the group name. Oh and yes, that's it. yes, this is what I was and, saying. And that's yeah, it. Yeah. And the yeah. timer, the, 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 the time 
uh, the delay is defined in configuration okay, and, yeah, and yeah. defaults to the default groups timer. So mm -hmm. by default today it's one minute. If you define your groups, it will be one minute. Unless you go in the configura and you, configuration, you say my group foo is two minutes, and then it will take two minutes. Okay, yeah, that, 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 that's what I meant, actually. Okay, cool. so, so there would be a default for every group? That's what you say? No, uh, I mean, there, is, there, there will be one default. This is the one minute we have today. If you create a new group as an attribute in your task, and there is no one defined, no timer defined for, uh, no delay defined in configuration, it will take one minute like it is today. It's, it's the case today. If you look at the configuration today, it's commented. There is no configuration. So it's hard coded in a code, one minute. But as soon as you define a configuration, this is a new default. And if you define a configuration for your specific group, this will be the default for your group. Yeah, I, I like this because because it would um, be really an, an issue if you needed to have um, a configuration in the host components config all the time. So yep. this way you have a default, but you can override it. I think it's fine. Yep. And this is the case today, so no breaking change. It's completely transparent. Um, could even be done in 1.8.x, but we won't. Um, OK, uh, nice talk. So we have an agreement, and uh, we have uh, someone who takes some notes. <laughs> um, so I have some other um, matters to talk. One that can be quick or so, Abhishek requested to have access to the website to be able to post links to the, I think, to the um, blog post or to the tutorials he's creating. Um, I'm fine with that, Give him, giving access to the, to the website. Vote, no vote. Abhishek, do we trust him? Um, is there anybody against? <laughs> we already trust him for the documentation, so it will be stupid not to trust him for the website. It's just about what he publishes. If we agree that it's, it's, it's not, you know, oh, Lombic is beautiful and we know that, but as long as it's uh, honest uh, <laughs> publications, that's fine. Okay, fine. Okay, let's give Abhishek uh, access to that. <clears throat> then, 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 piece of crap crushed again. Yeah. Um, caching interface engine of future access. Let me see. We can talk about it next week. Nothing urgent. Uh, if you're interested into the so Zoltan, you might want to look at um, Piotr uh, branch because. We need to talk about the caching interface changes. And I think that will be about it. I will just postpone some of the discussions for next week, which is fine. Bertrand says, uh, <laughs> let's put Hangouts on the agenda. I put Hangouts on the agenda for next week too. Is it fine? And in the meantime, you can, uh, you can think about your argumentation. Hey, Sebastian, just one thing about the, the background tasks, yes. uh, about uh, the configuration, because um, uh, what I was thinking about, uh, this is just in my loose thoughts, uh, is that we are using the time-based firing of the... Someone muted Piotr. That's not me, I, sh I swear. Okay, I unmuted myself. Sorry. So maybe, maybe there's a... Um, it would be a good idea to add more uh, options. For example, you, you may have background tasks like indexing that may run between, I don't know, 10 minutes or half an hour. And if we set up a half an hour, each, each half an hour, so if the task runs for 10 minutes, so you lose 20 minutes because the next task will run in 30 minutes, so it slows things down. So maybe there should be also an option to run the task uh, right after the previous one finishes. So to... Um, or or a specific uh, on a specific event not so have an option to not only use timer open no it will be it will be timer but on reentrancy you will have a endless next one that will be fine but open mm -hmm. a work item for that and don't okay. do that yet just mm -hmm. time okay. task by task I'm just throwing out the, the okay. idea yeah you can open a work item that's fine that will be fine okay yeah.
Okay, cool. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks, guys. See ya. Uh, see you on Thursday for Bug Triage or on Tuesday for the next bye meeting. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.